uh, help me to sing this song. This is a song that has been able to lift many birds. This song has been able to dry many tears from a lot of folk back. And I want you to sing it like you used to sing back down in Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. God bless you. God bless you. Would you turn, if you please, to Exodus, the fifth chapter, and a few of those following verses. And it reads like this. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, thus says the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me and the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord, that I should obey this voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither would I let Israel go. And they said, the God of the Hebrew have met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey in the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. We would like to um, use for our subject on today, let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. When we look at this word deal, we think about a plan, a bargain, or a contract of some sort that we are trying to deal for. There are two very important factors that we ought to try and analyze before we accept any kind of a deal. You understand, it is very important, number one, to know who you are dealing with. Yeah. 
Can I get a witness? And number two, I feel that you all at least have some idea what you are dealing for. So when we, when we focus our mind on talking about a deal, we ought to sit down and think about what the consequence is going to be. We find that many times in our marriages, there are many divorces just because they fail to make the right decision at the right time. You understand, folk marry for a lot of different reasons. Some of them sit down and they make deals and say, we're going to marry, we're going to stay together till the children get grown. You understand, but I don't believe God is dwelling in that kind of a man. You ought to stay there because God told you to stay there. Oh, I know I'm right about it. So we find out today that in order to make a deal, it takes two to make a deal. And when we go through this message, I would like for you to try and figure out who are you dealing with. You understand? And when we look on the natural side, many times we find that we have many folk to deal with. You understand? But uh, I would like to take you very quickly to the spiritual side of our message. And in our message, we find that we only have two to deal with. Is that right? I believe, I believe, I believe that Joshua said a few days ago, choose ye this day, whom you going to save. And not only that, I, I, I believe that Elijah said, I don't mind coming a few days ago. How long halted he between two opinions? In other words, you ought to make up your mind and decide who you are going to deal with. Number one, you have Satan to deal with. Number two, you have God Almighty to deal with. Well, now, if you are not dealing with the Lord, you know who you are dealing with. Undoubtedly, you are having your business fixed up and your ideas made up by Satan. Are you going to pray with me? So, so we find that there are only two dealers to deal with. And when we think about what we are dealing for, we don't have the two things to deal for. Well, number one, you are either dealing to go to heaven. After the deal is closed, you either will spend your life in hell eternity. Is that all right? So we find that we only have two choices here. It's either heaven or hell. It's either God or the devil. Oh, you might not like that. Praise God, but I know I am right about it. We find that in our lesson today, we are dealing with the children of Israel. And I would like to bring this event of Egypt to your mind, and we would like to pattern it to our own lives as of today. We look at Egypt, we think of Egypt as a place of sin. You understand, they, they worship on, on, over 2,200 gods down there in Egypt land. But it gives us to know that sure enough, Egypt was a sinful place. We look at Pharaoh, we look at Pharaoh as Satan. As when the children of Israel began to march out of Egypt, how that Satan was on that track. And isn't it true, every time you try to come out of sin, Satan will always try to overtake you. Oh, yeah. We look at Moses as a typical example of the deliverer of Jesus Christ himself. We would like to look at the exodus as salvation. In other words, the coming out of the deliverance out of something that you was in. Oh, you don't have any days. We would like to look at the Red Sea as a type of hindrance that are removed from our lives. You understand, a lot of folk are still in sin because they got so many things that's hindering them. Oh yeah, a lot of folk, a lot of folk have been standing by the Red Sea for a long time. You understand, trying to get out of Egypt. But for some reason, the sea just won't move. But I would like to remind you that God himself is able to move every hindering car that is hindering you, that keeping you down in your sin. Somebody said, well, I guess I'm just hung up on drugs. 
But I want to tell you today that I know somebody's able to move the drug problem. Yeah. Somebody said, well, I've been standing at the sea of homemarking and hypocrite. But I want to let you know I know a man that's able to move that healing car. Oh, yes. We would like to look at the mixed mother tool that came out of Egypt with us. That gives us to know that we got some of every kind of folk in the church. Come on now. You can find some liars in the church. You can find some homongers in the church. You can find some backbiters in the church. Oh, yes. We would like to look at, praise God, the wilderness journey. And that is our typical pilgrim journey as we are on our way to the promised land. We find that when the children of Israel got out of Egypt, they was on their way, isn't that right? But I want to remind you that you ain't going nowhere till you get out of your seat. Come on now. You, you, you might be fooling somebody, but you're not fooling God. As long as you are in your sin, you ain't going nowhere. You are still down in Egypt land. Oh, I know I'm right about it. So we look at our, we look at our subject today, and we look at the typical example of the children of Israel. We find that uh, they had prayed unto the Lord. They had asked the Lord to come down and see about it. You know, many times, many times, the folk will misuse church folk. Many times, they will misuse Christian folk. Because they feel like that you're not going to say anything about it. Many times, they will misuse you because they think that if you say something, you will lower your standard. And they feel like they're getting by with something. But I tell you, I tell you, this example has taught me a lesson. When the children of Israel got tired of Pharaoh, yeah. they didn't go to Pharaoh complaining, but they went down on their knees. Yeah. And, 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 and they began to tell God all about the trouble. Yeah. See, it, it's not enough to complain to man sometimes. You ought to tell God about the trouble. Yeah. I have seen folk that have... Just miss you, folk, and just miss you, folk, and just keep on miss you. Yeah. And they miss you them so long until they feel like that you're crazy. Yeah. And you just don't know any better. Yeah. But they don't realize that sometime in the midnight hour, yeah. you might be dying on your knees telling God all about your trouble. Yeah. So, 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 so as it was, when we look at our story today, we... No, that Moses was the man that was able to deliver them out of the land of Egypt. We know the story of how that Moses got, 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 got Moses' attention down at the burning bush. And Moses, Moses looked at that bush and he see the bush would not burn up. And, and after God got Moses' attention, then God was able to speak to Moses. Do you not know that that's what's wrong with a lot of our folk today? We, it's hard to get their attention. Yeah. You understand? Folk are dying every day, but nobody seems to bother by it. Yeah. You understand? The world seems like it's an old world, but nobody seems to bother by it. Yeah. Amen. But I believe sometimes that we ought to stop and think about it. Yeah. She was taking place in our land. Yeah. So as God got Moses' attention down at the bush, he told Moses, he said, Moses, I, I got a plan. I, I want you to take it back down to Egypt to Pharaoh. In other words, I, I got this deal, and I want you to take it and give it to him. You understand? Because, because I heard my children cry down there. I heard them, and I, I found out that they were down there, and things had got pretty rough on them. When I look at our society today, I want to let you know that things are getting pretty rough around here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, many times you can't even sleep comfortable in your home at night. Many times you can't even ride down the street comfortable. Because, because Salem is all around. I heard God for more than that. I want you to go down in Egypt land. And I want you to take this plan to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh what I say. You know, many times, many times we try to tell folk what we think. Oh, you don't hear me. I said many times you try, we try to tell folk what we think. But I think we ought to tell folk what God said now. God said, Moses, I want you to go on down there. And I want you to tell Pharaoh to let 
my people go. Yeah. Moses, just like a lot of us are today, yeah. trying to make excuses. Yeah. Some of you listen to me, God, I told you to do many things. Yeah. But you are still making excuses. Yeah. I don't want to remind you that your excuses will not excuse you. Yeah. Because whatever God said, that's exactly what he did. Yeah. So I can see Moses after he got through making all of his excuses. Yeah. And he decided that he would go on down to Egypt. Yeah. He went down there, he and his brother Aaron. And they walked up before Pharaoh and they said, Pharaoh, uh, the Lord sent me. Yeah. And Pharaoh looked at him and said, who is the Lord? Yeah. And who is it that said that I should obey what your God said? Yeah. But uh, Moses didn't have any fear in mind because he knew what God could do. Yeah. I want to encourage your heart today, my dear friends, that if you got Jesus, everything certainly would be all right. So I see Moses as he stood before Pharaoh. He said, Pharaoh, the Lord told me to tell you uh, to let us go on a three-day journey so that we may worship him and that we may serve him out in the wilderness. Pharaoh looked at him and said, well, Moses, I tell you what, I'll, I'll let you watch the Lord, but you got to watch with him right here where you are. Yeah. And isn't it true, isn't it true that sometimes Satan will try to tell folks yeah. that you can be saved right where you are. Yeah. Sometimes Satan will try to tell you, you don't have to be changed. Yeah. You ain't just as good as those church folk here, I think. Yeah. But I stop by to tell you that Jesus saved. You must be born again. <laughs> Moses said, no, Pharaoh, that's not what the law says. Pharaoh said, well, then Moses, I'll make another plan to you. I'll let you go if you just promise me you won't go too far. Yeah. You understand? Isn't that just like Satan? Yeah. Sometimes Satan will tell you, it don't take all of that. Uh, you don't have to go to church every Sunday morning. Praise God, you don't have to holler and shout in the services. It just don't take all of that. But it reminded me what the Bible said, make a job for no. To the Lord of all he land. Serve the Lord with glad. And it sounds glad when they say, let us go into the house of God. Moses said, no, Pharaoh. I can't accept that deed. And, and, and after praise God, he kept on talking to Moses. He said, well, I tell you, Moses, I got another deal I want to offer to you. I'll let you go if you just promise me you'll leave your little ones behind. Well, isn't that just like Satan? Many times Satan will tell you, go in the church and leave your children in the bed. You understand? He'll tell you, he'll tell you, don't, don't try to uh, deprive them of their privilege. Uh -huh. Let them enjoy themselves while they are young. Yeah. Oh, you don't hear me. Praise God. And, 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 and many times, many times I've seen parents just disturb me. I've seen parents will lock their child up behind pillars of wall uh -huh. just because they want to attend a public school. Yeah. I've seen them lock them up and put them away because they won't go to man's school. Yeah. But have God's school ever sent them on? Yeah. And they have not even yet enrolled. Yeah. Oh, yes. You will try to make him go to school. You'll whoop him and check with the teachers and make sure he's in the classroom. Yeah. On Sunday morning when Sunday school doors are open, yeah. your child is somewhere sleeping, lying in the bed. Yeah. And it don't even disturb you. Yeah. Moses, I believe the Bible said, train up a child. Yeah. I know I'm right about it. Yeah. Not only that, it says, remember that creator yeah. in the day of that you. Yeah. Oh, yes, and I know Satan is just like that. But I heard Moses say, no, Pharaoh, I just can't accept that deal. Pharaoh said, well, Moses, I got one more thing I want to tell you. I I'll let you go if you just promise me you'll leave your cow behind. 
Isn't that just like Satan? Yeah. Well, Satan will tell you, you don't have to pay your money in the church. Yeah. Leave your money at home and take care of your bees. How about you? I just wouldn't take all my money to church. But that's just like Satan. But I believe it counts. I'm a thousand here belong to the Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know I am right about it. Moses said, no, Pharaoh. I just can't accept that deal. You see, Moses, Pharaoh was trying to make a deal with Moses because God had been on Pharaoh's track. You understand? God had been kind of bargain Pharaoh. You understand? Because Pharaoh would not let his people go. He had let the blood water turn to blood. And not only that, he had caused frogs to start hopping all over the place. He had let lies begin all over men and over the cattle. And he had let the flies begin to swarm all through the house. And that's why Pharaoh wanted to make a deal with the law. Isn't that true? A lot of times the law get on our track. Sometimes trouble begin to come. Sometimes this has to strike our home. And we try and make a deal with the law. But in the final analysis, God will not accept your deed. You will have to accept God's deed. I know I'm right about it. The plan of salvation is laid out. And you must accept what God says the law. Isn't that right? So as I close here, and as I take my seat, I believe that when they began to go in the wilderness, they wasn't worried about it because they knew that they was on their way to the promised land. And isn't it true in our lives we that have shown up and born again. We, we, we that have gave our lives and told the Lord, Hail my yeah. Lord, send me. Yeah. Isn't it true, brother priest, that we are marching through the wilderness? Yeah. Isn't it true that we are on our way yeah. to the promised land? Yeah. And I would like to remind all of you today, yeah. those of you that are still down in Egypt, yeah. those of you that are still down in your sea, yeah. I would like to recommend to you the man I've been dealing with, yeah. and I've been dealing with him for a long time. Yeah. And I want to let you know that I can't find no fault. Yeah. I can't find no fault in the man. I started out a long time ago. I, I made a deal with the Lord. I told him, yes, Lord, I will go. I'll go where you want me to go. I told him, Lord, I said, yes, Lord, I will say. It. I'll say what you want me to say. It. And I know for one thing that God loved me. Yeah. Isn't that all right? Yeah. I said, I know God loved me. Yeah. Ain't that all right? Yeah. I said, I know God loved me. Yeah. I know he does. A few years ago, he gave his only song. Yeah. Except for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, they shall not perish, but they shall have everlasting life. And I know Jesus died. You don't hear me to see I said, I know Jesus died. Didn't he die? They hung him on the cross. I know he died. I know. They laid him down. They laid him down in the grave early Sunday morning. Yes, it did. Early Sunday morning. He got up out of the grave. He looked at the grave. And he said, oh, grave, where is your big rest? 
and he caught a hold to death. He said, oh, death, where are you say, Good God Almighty. Now, he said, look at me. I got all power. I got all power in my hand. Ain't God all right? Yes, he loves. I know he loves it. I said, I know God loves it. For those of you that have been down for a long time, for those of you that have been sick for a long time, I want to recommend to you Jesus. He's all right. I want to recommend to you Jesus. Won't he make you way? Won't he bring you out of trouble? Won't God do it for you? Yes, he will. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said I've been dealing with it for a long time. Every time I get weak, uh, sometimes I fall on my knees. Uh, but every time I go down, uh, God will pick me up. Uh, you don't have any seen it. Uh, sometimes I get in trouble uh, and seem like I can't see my way. Uh, but all I got to do is say, Jesus, uh, that's all I got to say. Uh, Jesus, uh, ain't God all right? Uh, Hallelujah. I know God is all right. I've been dealing with it for a long time. I said, I've been dealing with it for a long time. I said, I've been dealing with it for a long time. Somebody over here, don't you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been in trouble? And you know you need a lawyer. Have you ever been in trouble? And you know you need a lawyer. Ain't God all right? Have you ever been sick? And you know you needed a doctor. Won't God heal your body? Somebody over here, you know what I'm talking about. Sometime in the midnight hour, you cried all night long. All you got to do is say, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. I said, let's make a deal. If you've been down, I want to recommend Jesus to you. If you've been out, I want to recommend Jesus to you. If you feel like you're friendly, uh, I want to recommend Jesus to you. Uh, if you are down in your sin, uh, I want to recommend Jesus to you. Uh, I know he's able. Uh, I said, I know he's able. Uh, I said, I know he's able. Uh, he's able. I feel all right now. I said he's able. I know God is able. See somebody looking at me funny. You might not know my deal, but I want to tell you something. If you ever need him, he'll come see about you. You might be sick enough, but he'll still come see about you. You might be and got old, and folks might be done push you aside, but I know Jesus will. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, I feel all right. Because I know what I'm talking about. This man, Jesus. It doesn't make any different what it is. It doesn't make any different how hard it is. So all you got to do is put your trust in him. And he'll make everything all right. If you just trust in him, he'll move that sea of land. He'll move that sea of home mind. He'll move that sea of backbite. He'll move that sea of dope. He'll move that sea of alcohol. 
you move that sea of incompetence. All you got to do, all you got to do, all you got to do is go down on your knees and talk to the Lord. Just tell him, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Fix me up. Take me up. Make me be what you want me to be. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Just a minute. Wait a minute. Wait one minute. I got a song that I just got to sing. See somebody been sick and the folks don't put them aside. Somebody done got old and the folks don't want to be bothered with. Somebody behind prison walls and the folks won't come see about it. I got a song that I want to sing to you, and I want you to listen to me. When the world seems cold in your friends, they seem few. There are someone who cares for you. When you need a, you need a friend, a friend. I wonder if anybody over here ever tried. I wonder 
Has anybody back there ever tried? Won't he come down? He'll come down from the sky now. Won't God wipe the tears? Won't he wipe them from your eyes? You are his child. And he cares. He cares for you. As I close now, and as I go to my seat, I want to tell you the deal that I made with him. After the deal is closed, he told me he had a home way know me in yonder city. And he said, he said, he said, if I live right, he said, don't let my heart be troubled because he was going to prepare a place for me and where he'll there be also. And I see John one day out on the aisle called Padman. John said, I was sitting there on the Lord's day and I seen 144,000 and I kept on looking. He said, I seen another number and in that number I could not count them. But he said they was coming up through hard trials. He said they was coming up who had made the blood, had washed the robe in the blood of Jesus. And I want to tell you, I was in that number. He said it was coming from the east and they was coming from the north. He said they was coming from the south. But I couldn't count. They was on their way to the promised land. And after the deal is closed, I'm going where Jesus is. I'm going where there won't be no more crying. Because God himself is going to wipe the tears from my eyes. I'm going where there's no more dying. Every day, every day, every day, it's going to be Sunday. Every month, it's going to be the month of May. Yeah, Lord, and yeah.